Ethiopia and Libya and Lydia and all the Confederates and Chubbed, Chubb and the men of the isle that is in league shall fall with them by the sword. Thus say, saith Yahweh, they also that uphold Egypt shall fall, and the pride of her power shall come down, and the tower of, is it sin? Anybody know? Sin? Shall they fall in it by the swords, saith Yah Yahweh. And they shall be desolate in the midst of the countries that are desolate, and her cities shall be in the midst of the cities that are wasted. And they shall know that I am Yahweh, when I have set a fire in Egypt, and when all her helpers shall be destroyed. In that day shall messengers go forth from me in ships to make careless Ethiopians afraid, and great pain shall come upon them, as in the day of Egypt, for lo, it cometh. Thus saith Yah Yahweh, I will also make the multitude of Egypt to cease by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. He and his people with him. The terrible of the nations shall be brought to destroy the land, and they shall draw their swords against Egypt and fill the land with the slain. And I will make the rivers dry and sell the land to the hand of the wicked. And I will make the land waste and all that is therein by the hand of strangers. I, Yahweh, have spoken it. Thus saith Yah Yahweh, I will also destroy the idols, and I will cause their images to cease out of Noph. And there shall be no more a prince in the land of Egypt, and I will put fear in the land of Egypt. And I will make Pathros desolate, and will set fire to Zoan, and will execute judgments in No. I will pour my fury upon sin and the strength of Egypt, and I will cut off the multitude of No. I will set fire in Egypt. Sin shall have great pain, and no shall be rent asunder, and no shall have distresses daily. Young men of Avin and of Pibesh shall fall by the sword, and these cities shall go into captivity. At the Tehaphanes also the day shall be darkened, when I shall break their yokes of Egypt and the pomp of her strength shall cease in, in her. As for her, a cloud shall cover her, and her daughters shall go into captivity. Thus will I execute judgment in Egypt, and they shall know I am Yahweh. And it came to pass in the eleventh year, in the first month, in the seventh day of the month, that the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, I have broken the arm of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and lo, it shall be bound up to be healed, to put a roller to bind it, to make it strong and hold the sword. Therefore, thus saith Yah Yahweh, behold, I am against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and I will break his arms, the strong and that which was broken, and I will cause the sword to fall out of his hand. And I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations, and I will disperse them through the countries. And I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon, and I will put my sword in his hand. But I will break Pharaoh's arms, and he shall groan before him with the groanings of a deadly wounded man. But I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon, and the arms of Pharaoh shall fall down, and they shall know that I am Yahweh when I shall put my sword in the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall stretch it out upon the land of Egypt. And I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and disperse them among the countries, and they shall know that I am Yahweh. Ezekiel 30th chapter.
state of its condition then you see it come to fruition that's a type of resurrection when you turn off the light and go to sleep at night bury your head beneath the covers 
Arise in the morning, oh, that's just another type of resurrection. So I know that he lives, my Redeemer lives. I know. Tell me, do you? Yes, I know that he lives, my Redeemer lives. I know he gave me all the proof. Yes, I know that he lives, my Redeemer lives. This I know. How about you? How about you? Israel ate that lamb, then left Egypt's land to the Red Sea. Oh, Pharaoh right behind them. Through divided waters, Yah delivered them on dry land. That's a type of resurrection. Old Joseph was a dreamer, his brothers did despise. They put him in that hole, for they sought to take his life. Then he was lifted up by the merchants passing by. That's a type of resurrection. So I know that he lives, my Redeemer lives. This I know. Tell me, do you? Yes, I know that he lives, my Redeemer lives. Oh, he lives. He gave me all the proof. Yes, I know that he lives, my Redeemer lives. This I know. How about you? How about you? Abraham was faithful, took his son to sacrifice. Then Yahweh said, you please me, you don't have to take his life. Then he turned around to see the ram Yah did provide. That's a type of resurrection. Oh, a type of resurrection. and shadows truly testify that Yahshua has risen, that Holy Spirit that gives life. I don't have to sit and wonder if he is alive, because he said, I am the resurrection. So I know that he lives, my Redeemer lives. I know, do you know? Yes, I know that he lives, my Redeemer lives. I know, do you know? And the first speaker for this evening session will be Dr. Graciela Underwood. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to the session of the IDMR. And uh, as we all who are here presently know, uh, this is a, one of the branches of the school that was founded by uh, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, um, who was instructed by Yahweh, our Elohim, to teach the divine vision that was given directly to him from Yahweh. And uh, it is the Holy Spirit, Yash Messiah, that will give the revelation. And as are always our hope that any soul that um, comes to these sessions, whether it be through a Ustream program or sitting in a seat here, um, you know, really take the time to look at the things that are presented and to see whether or not it be thus saith Yahweh. Um, I'm hopefully getting the correct scripture by asking for Deuteronomy 19.15. <laughs> and I also want Isaiah 8 and 20. And uh, I'm going to want John 1, I think it's 44 and 45, for starters. Yeah. So when you get that, just go ahead and read those. Thank you. Uh, Deuteronomy 19 and 15, I believe is what I want. 
Deuteronomy 19 and 15. One witness shall not mm -hmm. rise up against a man for any iniquity mm -hmm. or for any sin, in any sin that he sinneth. At the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. Okay. Continue with the next um, scripture, please. Isaiah 8 and 20. To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Okay, and then get for me the, the third scripture. Now, hopefully you've been listening to the ones that have been read so far. Okay, there are some things we want to bring out. Go ahead, please. John 1, 44 through 45, I believe. John 1 and 44. Now, Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and mm -hmm. Peter. Philip, Philip findeth Nathanael and said unto him, We have found him, of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, mm -hmm. Yahshua of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Okay, and then I also want Acts. Um, I'm not sure if it's 26 or 28, but it's the 23rd verse, and it's going to be where Paul, uh, and he's instructing them out of uh, Moses and the prophets. Mm -hmm. So if you can find that. Because what we're, what we're going and showing you is that when Yahweh appears to his various uh, prophets as Yahweh Elohim in this vision in uh, such shape and form without flesh and blood, he gave them witnesses to show that what he was going to have them tell the people was true. Now, and likewise, when he came as Yash Messiah, he is going to do everything that is written in the law and in the prophets, because those are his witnesses. And then when the apostles, those who uh, walked with him during the time that he was uh, doing his ministry through those three and a half years, and saw the things that he was doing, the miracles that he was performing, hearing the words he was speaking, one of the things that Yahshua himself stated in Matthew 5, 17 through 18 is that he did not come to destroy the law, okay? But he came to fulfill it, and that he was going to do everything, jot and tittle, everything that was written in the law and in the prophets. He was going to come to fulfill those things. So did you find Acts? Or Paul? Acts 20, 28 and 23. Okay. And when they had appointed him a day, there mm -hmm. came many to him into his lodging. Okay. Now, this is Paul's lodging that they're coming to, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, continue. To whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of Yahweh, persuading them concerning Yahshua, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets, from morning till evening. So that's where he went. And I'm going to walk over here to our elementary chart. Because we've got written here law and testimony. And I'm just going to point to that, okay? Because what I found out through this school is that the law is the first five books that Moses wrote and that the testimony is, are those books that were written, and I'm calling them books at this time, that were written by the uh, next uh, 34 books written by the prophet. So that's 39 books that we now have compiled as people refer to it, the Old Testament. Now, I found out in this school also that the Old Testament is actually what occurred between Yahweh and the children of Israel, that covenant. It's not what we think of as being that Old Testament. But for sake of what they refer to it, that's what they refer to as the Old Testament. And so when Yahshua, and that being the true name of the Savior, when he was walking the earth plain, like I said, Matthew 5.17, go ahead and read that, please. He had a set mission. And that was to fulfill everything that was written of him in the law and in the testimony and in the Psalms. And that's also testified to in Luke, the 24th chapter, when he, after he'd taken off the flesh, and there was two that were walking to Emmaus, he appeared to them and they didn't know him. And at that time, he told them, oh fools, and slow of heart to believe everything that's written. Okay? And he basically, he went ahead into, into great detail going to the law and to the testimony about the things concerning himself. Uh, go ahead and read that. Matthew, please. Matthew 5 and 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. 
I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Mm -hmm. So now that we've established, hopefully, to some degree, that Yash the Messiah came for the purpose of fulfilling the law and the prophets, we need to take a look at what's in the law and the prophets, as well as what's not in the law and the prophets. Now, uh, I'm not up on my dates, but my understanding is that this is the month uh, where they um, have this holiday called Easter. Right. And you know, they also have what's referred to as Good Friday and all those other things. Now, um, at one point, you know, I was raised Roman Catholic, and so they would have ceremonies associated with each of those things. And one of the things that they would do also in relation to Easter coming up is they'd have Lent. They'd have 40 days where you had to choose something that you were going to give up for Lent. Now, these concepts are not things that are given to the Gentiles to do. The, Lent wasn't even given to, to the children of Israel to do. Okay, and um, this business about Good Friday, and even, gosh, I remember there was a, uh, something that was called, they even gave a name to the Thursday, although I don't remember the name of it, Ma Maudie, Maudie. Maudie Thursday. Yep. And, uh, and they had Ash Wednesday, and I remember that they would change the different colors in, in the particular church, that Roman Catholic church that I, at that time I attended. And I remember as a child thinking to myself, I have to be very sad on Good Friday. You know, because that's the day that he, that, and I'm walking over here, that's the day that he died. And at that point in time, I only knew the name Jesus Christ. And I thought Jesus was his first name and Christ was his last name. But I learned in this school that that was a lie. I learned that Jesus is not his name, could not have been his name, because the J itself did not even exist and looking at what's inscribed up here, it writes as, it, we see it as reading I-N-R-I. But what was written on this cross was written in the languages of Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. And in none of those languages was there a J. And the name that he was to, to be given, uh, let's go ahead and get Matthew uh, 121 for a moment. The name that he was to be given was a name that was told to those who had to go through the process of, of naming him, okay, by an angel. It was a heavenly name. And it had, it had to be a name that was going to be above every name because it was going to be the name for salvation. Go ahead, um, read that. Thank Matthew you, 1 and 21. Mm -hmm. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahshua for he shall save his people from their sins. Okay, now I'm going to walk over here to what we refer to as the name chart, because I'm going to point to that name, Yahshua. Because first of all, I want to show you something. These, this portion of the name, Yah, is similar to this portion of Yahweh. Yahweh is both male and female in principle, Yah being that masculine portion. And if you, have, if you go ahead and get for me um, and read it out of the Holy Name Bible version, uh, Psalm 68 and 4. And then this part right here, Shua, the meaning of that is salvation. What it is telling us is that Yahweh is salvation. And he said that he came in his father's name. So this is the masculine portion of the name, and this is the feminine portion. And we're talking about principles here, because Yahweh, to tell you honestly, he's not flesh and blood, remember? He's spirit. So we're talking about principles, and he's the one who made this whole creation and has everything going according to a plan. He has an operation going. And his, his purpose is to save souls. He does not want any to perish. But guess what? If you don't believe in him, if you don't accept him, then that is what's going to happen. You will perish. Your soul will not live through that second death. What have I got out, please, readers? Keep me Psalm on track. Psalm 68 and 4. Mm -hmm. Sing unto Yahweh. Sing praises to his name. Extol him that writeth upon the heavens by his name, Yah. See, now it says Yah. Now, if you were to look at a King James version of that same scripture, it would say J-A-H. Because somewhere along the line, someone made it that decision to put in the J. But it should be Y-A-H, Yah. 
So that's what I'm showing you. Yahweh is salvation. Now, coming on back here, because I don't want to lose track of what I was going to say with regard to um, the Eastern stuff. Now, um, I found out in this school a little bit more about what's written back here in Exodus, the 12th chapter. So let's go ahead and pick that up, because I want to point this out, that um, that whole business about Easter, there's, there's, there's various aspects of it that people have adopted and gone ahead and said, well, it's okay. We're doing it for the children. You know, I know it's not real, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Whatever excuse that they, they use, you know. And, and at the same time, they grew up that way. I mean, you know, I remember going on Easter egg hunts. I remember giving my children a chance to have Easter egg hunts. I remember the chocolate bunnies, but I also remember thinking to myself, what's with this eggs and bunny stuff? <laughs> you know, and, and I didn't really learn about what that was all about till I came to this school and found out it has to do with paganism, pagan thoughts and idols, okay? Um, I don't want to lose track. Where am I? Exodus 12 and 1. Thanks. And Yahweh spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. Okay, now, so Yahweh is establishing the beginning of months. And it's going to go ahead and tell us in other verses. Uh, I know Deuteronomy 16 and 1, I believe, is one of them. But basically, it's Abib, which you know, relates to our April. So this is the beginning of months. Continue. Um, and Yahweh spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, mm -hmm. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, mm -hmm. In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers. Okay, I'm going to be interrupting you, because um, having been in this school, I also know that prior to this being spoken to, to Moses by Yahweh, Yahweh had introduced himself to Moses here at this burning bush, and Moses had to come down for the purpose of Yahweh delivering his people up out of this dark land of Egypt, because they were in bondage to that Pharaoh, okay, down there. So now they've already had nine devastating, and I mean devastating. I mean, we couldn't even get through this winter without going like, oh my goodness, yeah, one more day of snow, one more day of ice, one more day of below temperatures, you know. They had nine devastating plagues. This land was in shambles. Now for the tenth plague, Yahweh told his people, because he had a chosen people, and there was the children of Israel at this time, okay? And he told them the things that we're reading about. Go ahead. According to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. Mm -hmm. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of souls. Mm -hmm. Every man according to his eating mm -hmm. shall make your count for the lamb. Continue. Your lamb shall be without blemish. Okay, now listen. This lamp, lamb, this lamb had to be without blemish. That was a requirement. No ifs, ands, or buts. Continue. A male of the first year. Had to be a male. Had to be of the first year. Continue. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. They could take it from the sheep or from the goats. Go ahead. And ye shall keep it up until the 14th day. Okay, they took it out on the 10th, and now they're holding it over to the 14th day, examining this lamb. Okay, continue. Of the same month. Mm -hmm. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Okay, now the wording there doesn't seem strange to us until it's brought to our attention later on in the fulfillment and go like, whoa. Okay, continue. Mm -hmm. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts mm -hmm. and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. Okay, now it's telling what they're going to do with the blood of this lamb they have to do something very special with the blood of this lamb. They've got a basin, they're going to have hyssop, and they're going to strike the lentil and the two side posts. Now you've got that basin of blood, that's one. You've got the lentil, that's two. And then you've got three and four. Four points of blood on the door. Continue. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, mm -hmm. roast with fire, 
and unleavened bread, mm -hmm. and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Now, this is the menu for Passover, okay? Roasted lamb, bitter herbs, unleavened bread. That's what they were to have and when they continue to hold that memorial during the time period that Yahweh decreed for them to do that. That's what was on the menu. Continue. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water. They couldn't even choose how to cook it. Okay? It was told what they had to do. Go ahead. But roast with fire. Roast with fire. His head with his leg. Yep. And with the pertinence thereof. Mm -hmm. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. It wasn't, the, none, of that, none of that body was to remain until the morning. All these are significant points because Yahshua Messiah is going to fulfill those things. Continue. And that which remaineth of it until the morning, ye shall burn with fire. Mm -hmm. And thus shall ye eat it, with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Because they had to be ready to go because they were going to leave out of this land of Egypt, okay? So we showed you that was four points of blood. Now, the other thing that occurs, okay, is that they are going to end up coming at some point to this barrier, which is referred to as the Red Sea. And they looked at it as being a barrier because at this point in their journey, there's mountains on either side, and Pharaoh and 666 horsemen and chariots, as I recall, are in hot pursuit because now they've wondered why they've let all their slaves go. And who's going to do all the stuff to rebuild Egypt that now is devastated? We need our workers. And by golly gosh, they're not getting away with this. <laughs> so the children of Israel at this point see that they're in dire straits, and they give up. Ten devastating plagues on Egypt. The mighty hand of Yahweh has been shown to them. But what they really need to see is the salvation of Yahweh. And I want you to get that verse wherever that verse is, is at. Exodus 14 and 21. Thank you. You're welcome. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. Oh, I don't think this is it. <laughs> Oops, okay, she's going to get the other one. Okay, do you want that anyway, though? Or yes, I, oh, you can get that anyways. Okay. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and Yahweh caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind. Yes, that's what I want. All that night, mm -hmm. and made the sea dry land. And yeah, thirteen and twenty-one. Yeah. Okay, get that one too. Because first of all, well, I wanted the first verse because of what's said, and mm -hmm. then you see what happens. Okay, go ahead. Fourteen and thirteen. Mm -hmm. And Moses said unto the people. Fear ye not. Fear ye not. This is what Moses is saying to the people, the children of Israel. Go ahead. Fear ye not. Stand still. Stand still. And see the salvation of Yahweh. And see the salvation of Yahweh. Which he will show to you today. Which he will show you today. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want you to see. We want you to see the salvation of Yahweh today, which is Yahshua. Mm -hmm. Yahweh is salvation. Mm -hmm. So then he went ahead and he parted this Red Sea, and they were able to walk through on muddy ground? No. Dry ground. But guess what happened to those uh, Pharaoh and his 666 you know, guys that were pursuing after them? They went ahead and pursued after them, and they did not get through. Boom. Dead. Water. Drowned. Everything, you know? They didn't get through. Yahweh determines who gets in and who doesn't. Okay? So, so far we showed you something about blood. Now we showed you something about water. And then what we haven't told you, which I believe this is the scripture that says here, Exodus 23, mm -hmm. 20 through 23. We want to show you something about spirit. Because there was an angel in a cl cloud that was leading them. And it was also that cloud that stood from before them to behind them to become between them and the Egyptians, so that there was light for the children of Israel and darkness to the Egyptians. Continue. To read Exodus that. 23 and 23. Mm -hmm. For mine angels shall go before thee and bring thee in unto the Amorites and the Hittites mm -hmm. and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, mm -hmm. and I will cut them off. 
Okay, so Yahweh is letting him know that he's the one who's going to be leading them, okay? That angel. So you've got blood, you've got water, and you've got spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, I start off by telling you about the fact that Yahshua, let me come over here, just point here for a moment, that Yahshua fulfilled the law and the prophets. And then I came over here and started telling you about this story with regard to the children of Israel, showing you blood, water, and spirit. What do those things have in common? Okay, let's get 1 John 5 and 7. 1 John 5 and 7. Mm -hmm. I'm going to walk over here to the, this portion of the elementary chart because we've got that written up here too. Go ahead. 1 John 5 and 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, mm -hmm. the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And these three are one. Now, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, these three are one. Mm -hmm. Okay? They don't agree in one. It's not a committee. They are one. There's only one Spirit. Okay? <laughs> Continue reading, please. And there are three that bear witness in earth, mm -hmm. the spirit and the water and the blood. Now, remember I started off by telling you the fact that you had to have two or three witnesses for the matter to be established. And now we're hearing about witnesses again, the spirit, the water, and the blood. This right here is testifying. Continue reading, please. And these three agree in one. Mm -hmm. Keep reading. If, if we receive the witness of men... The witness of Yahweh is greater. This is the witness of Yahweh. Continue. For this is the witness of Yahweh, which he hath testified of his son. And this testifies to Yahshua Messiah. Continue. He that believeth on the son of Yahweh mm -hmm. hath the witness in himself. Mm -hmm. He that believeth not Yahweh hath made him a liar, mm -hmm. because he believeth not the record that Yahweh gave of his son. So there's a record that Yahweh has given of his son. And we've just showed you a little bit of it, but let's go ahead and show you how we came to that understanding, okay? And let's go over here back to the Moses chart for a moment. So this all happened before the children of Israel made their way out into here to the wilderness of Sinai. But once they made their way out here to the wilderness of Sinai, okay, at some point, Yahweh has Moses come up, and then he tells them to have the people clean up, you know, stay away and all this stuff. But there's another trip that he has them come up, and he gives them a the vision. And in that vision... He shows him himself as his tabernacle pattern. Now, this tabernacle pattern, he's then told, get Exodus 25th chapter. Exodus 25 and 8. Mm -hmm. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them, according to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall you make it. And Hebrews 8 and 5, I believe. So this pattern has significance in that it is actually Elohim, the archetype original pattern that was shown to Moses to explain how he made the creation and how he, everything is going according to that tabernacle pattern. So then he goes and has, instructs him to build this um, exactly like it was shown in the mount. That would be in the 40th verse also. And it has a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. One, two, three, but it's one tabernacle showing forth Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua. These three are one, like we just told you. And in this tabernacle pattern, it was also um, the means by which, after they'd been married to Yahweh by those 613 ordinances that were spoken down unto them, and they said everything that Yahweh said we will do, that if they broke any of those, they had to bring a sacrifice. And it had to be offered on that altar. Um, let me come over here to this larger depiction. The altar of sin sacrifice, okay? But that sacrifice also had to be immersed or washed or baptized in this brazen labor. And this priest here at the door at the age of 30 was anointed with that holy anointing oil that was from the holy anointing oil cup. Okay, so I'm showing you that there's an altar, a brazen labor, and then oil. But I'm also going to show you that this priest, he had to put blood on the four corners of this altar. Okay, so there's blood. He had to have this sacrifice washed, so there's the water. And it was a, quick, a type of a quickening spirit that allowed him to perform the operations in this tabernacle that Yahweh decreed that must be performed without error or else he would die. So you've got blood, you've got water, you've got spirit. There's an operation that Yahweh is showing. 
that he's going by, blood, water, spirit, okay? So you see it back here with the children of Israel before he's shown this tabernacle pattern, but now that you have this tabernacle pattern, you're giving a, given a chance to see that he is indeed operating by the blood, the water, and the spirit. And as we said, those are the witnesses that Yahshua Messiah is also operating by. So he's got to come in, okay? And there's got to be, I'm going to come over here to the larger depiction again. This is referred to as the Karna Ornus chart. And he's got to have four points of blood. He's going to have that, was crown, that crown of thorns, not just gently placed like a real crown on his head at a coronation. They struck it onto his head, and you know, so he bled. And this is one of the easiest places for, your, for you to lose a lot of blood is, is up here in your head, because guess what? Your brain needs a lot of blood, so there's some major arteries going up there, you know? And then he got struck in the hands, okay? So you got one, two, three, and then struck in the feet. Four. Four points of blood. Well, wait a minute. I see something here on the side. What about that? Well, he, he had the witnesses in himself. Out came blood and water, and he'd already given up the spirit, okay? So you've got those four points of blood referring to there. Now, I'm going to come back here for a moment, because this is what we refer to as the baptism and ministry plate. And it's showing where John the Baptist um, went ahead and when Yahshua came to him, you know, he asked the question that he was asking every, all the other Jews, that, and I'm calling them that for now, the Jews that came to him, you know. Because it was John's purpose, okay? It was his purpose. Now let's get John uh, 129, but first get Matthew 3 and 1, and then... Read a little bit. Read a Matthew little bit. 3 and 1. Mm -hmm. In those days came John the Immerser, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is near at hand. Now, you should have already heard one of the scriptures talking about the kingdom. Okay? The kingdom is at hand. He's announcing that the kingdom is at hand. Now, if there's a kingdom, there's a king. Okay? Continue reading, please. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, mm -hmm. Prepare ye the way of Yahweh. Make straight in the desert a highway for our Elohim. See, Yahweh said that there was going to be someone preparing the way. Okay? Continue reading. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair, and a leathern girdle about his loins, mm -hmm. and his food was locusts and wild honey. He was not your average looking man back then either. Go ahead. <laughs> then went out to him Jerusalem, and all Judea, all Judea, and all the region round about Jordan. See, he wasn't going to the Gentiles. He was going only to the Hebrew nation. Okay, continue. And were immersed by him in Jordan, confessing their sins. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to, come to his, his immersion, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Now, the, the religious leaders at that time had strayed from thus saith Yahweh. So John, John is telling them, who's warned you? Okay, about the wrath to come. Because there was a, there's a wrath coming upon those who do not do as thus saith Yahweh. There is, okay? Plain and simple. So, John the Baptist, or John the Immerser, as it would say, depending on whether you're using Greek or not, he's been asking them if they sin and for them to repent. So when Yahshua and Messiah comes to him, Okay, let's go ahead and get, um, start at 11th first and, and go down to 15 of Matthew 3. I indeed immerse you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, mm -hmm. whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. Mm -hmm. He shall immerse you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now he's making a distinction between what his role is. He's an undertaker. He's burying people in the water. But the one to come is not going to be doing it in water. 
Repeat that verse again. What's he going to be using? Tim, go ahead, pick it up again. I indeed immerse you with water unto repentance, mm -hmm. but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall immerse you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now, wouldn't you rather have the Holy Spirit <laughs> and some fire to, to go ahead and, you know, preach the gospel of Yahshua Messiah rather than just having some physical water? <laughs> I would. <laughs> so that's who you want. You want the one to come. At who at, I'm talking about at that time, okay? Because we already know he is come, okay? He's not coming. He is come. Okay, now, um, did you get to 15 already? Okay, continue reading. Whose fan is in his hand, yeah. and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Mm -hmm. Then cometh Yahshua from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be immersed of him. Mm -hmm. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be immersed of thee, and comest thou to me? Mm -hmm. And Yahshua answering said unto him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he permitted him. So he's letting you know again why he's doing this, why he's submitting himself to be immersed in physical water by John the Baptist. It's for the purpose of fulfilling what was written of him in the law and in the prophets. Now, I told you a little about, about that tabernacle pattern, which regard to the fact that that's what those priests had to do. They had to immerse that sacrifice in that water. And he's declared to be that Lamb of Yahweh. And that's why I want John 1 29, please. John 1 and 29. The next day, John seeth Yahshua coming unto him, and saith, Behold, the Lamb of Yahweh, which taketh away the sin of the world. Mm -hmm. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me. For he was before me, and I knew him not, mm -hmm. but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Mm -hmm. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven mm -hmm. like a dove. See, now he was instructed that he was going to have to wait till he saw this. Okay? And this is what he saw. Continue. He saw it descending. And, and John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. And I knew him not. But he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same as he which baptizes or immerseth with the Holy Spirit. So he's identified right there that that's the one that they've been waiting for, okay? So John testifies that this is him. So that's why when we had John 1, 44 and 45, Philip, you know, going to Bartholomew, he'd heard about this. He says, this is the one who's written of from the law and the prophets. He's the one we've been waiting for, the Messiah. So he's going to do everything that he has to do that's written in the Law and the Prophets all the way from Adam, okay, on. He's going to fulfill what's written in those scriptures because that's the only thing that was available at that time. I'm letting you know right now, Luke, Mark, John, those things were not written. So he's fulfilling what's written in those 39 books that we refer to as the Old Testament. So it is important to know what's in there, okay? It's important to know what's in there. And part of what I wanted to point out, and I'm going to get off the floor, but part of what I wanted to point out is that part of what's in there has to do with the law about not worshiping idols or other gods, okay? And the children of Israel, you know, <laughs> they got themselves into a big mess by picking up things from other nations and worshiping other gods, and not staying true to Yahweh, okay? And so, um, you know, it's just amazing that some of us have not taken and looked at the things about what it is that we believed without really, we just, we just swallowed it. And so it's important to take a look at what it is you really believe and say, is this what he really is telling me or not? You know, those eggs, when you look at the history of what, what really went on as to how they got died and how that, 
It had to do with children being sacrificed, you know? And, oh, you just go, oh my goodness, you know? And bunnies and chickens and all that, fertility goddesses and gods. That's what they believed in back there. They were a polytheistic society where they believed in many gods. God for this, God for that, you know? There's only one true, and I'll call him Elohim because that's the title that he chose for himself. And that's Yahweh, our Elohim. And it's through Yash the Messiah, because he himself came down to be salvation for us, doing all the things that were written and doing it to a jot and to a tittle, to be our Savior. And so he deserves all our praise and all our honor to give to him and only to him. So hallelujah. And the next speaker for this evening's session will be Dr. David Underwood. Is that how you say it? Good evening. I'm sure that you were edified in the words of the previous speaker. Um, readers, I'd like for you to go over to Acts 12 and 4. And the cameraman, you're going to have to follow me. Yep, go ahead. Acts 12 and 4. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quatrains of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Now, the he is someone called Herod. And the one that he apprehended after killing James because it pleased the Jews is the one called Peter. And the word Easter, the festival, is supposedly when Herod was going to go ahead and bring Peter before the people. And that's in this plate here called Resurrection Reconfirmed, plate 35. And pictured right down here is the event, and it does say Acts, the 12th chapter, and you have Herod here. You have James who's been slain. And it's quite the story about Peter being resurrected out of prison. And he was in a tight situation. He was chained by two chains. He had soldiers on both sides. They had people outside the door. But he just walked on out with the angel. And the reason all that took place is, is the reconfirmation of the resurrection of the one that's being talked about tonight. And that one is who? It's this one, Yahshua. It was 10 years, correct? 10 years to the day that Peter was released, and he understood truly this one Yahshua resurrected. Now, the previous speaker mentioned that Yahshua came in to fulfill. You know what? He did not fulfill Easter. Easter was not a festival or a holy day given unto the Jews. It's not one of the seven, the big seven, none of them. But Easter 
Matter of fact, some people even have this one Jesus being crucified today because they got to figure out some way how he is literally three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. They got to figure out how that can take place. Right? Now, let's go on all the way on back up front. We're going to bring along the, the blackboard, whiteboard, the board. There is a great mystery that is in play. Actually, there's a mystery of righteousness, who is Joshua the Messiah. Then there is a mystery of iniquity. And this mystery of iniquity has caused to be set up a mystery religion that is out there in the world. And it all started off right back after the degeneration and the first man, Adam, you see that old serpent, that old mystery boy, setting up this Tower of Babel. And if you were to take the time and to research bunny rabbits and eggs and that delicious ham that you bought for this time of year, It's a mystery religion, and it has its roots way back here, and it has just come down to the point where you just don't know why you do what you have done, or your parents have done, or your great-grandparents have done. You just don't know. So we're happy to be able to shed some light about this time of year. Because it was at this time of year that Yahshua the Messiah, he did die. Yahshua did die. He was buried and he did resurrect at this time of year. Now, when you look at the whole big earth, you see the earth go through a death. Don't you? It's called fall, autumn. Isn't there a burial? We were buried here in the north with quite a bit of white stuff called snow. But now we're coming to what? That time of year where there's going to be a resurrection. You start seeing the plants coming up. And you know what? Yahshua did resurrect, and he did outpour the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost to the Jews first. That's all part of a very important story, as we pointed out here with that first degeneration in Adam, so that we can have a regeneration in that second Adam, which is Yahshua. Now, the previous speaker went to Exodus, the 12th chapter. So let's go back to the 12th chapter because, see, the people just don't have any hope, confidence, trust, belief in Yahshua. You don't have it. Well, I believe in Jesus. That is not the same of believing in Yahshua. Well, I have confidence in Jesus. That is not the same as having confidence in Yahshua. I trust in Jesus. Well, that's not the same as having the trust in Yahshua. Well, I know Jesus. Well, that's not knowing Yahshua. So we're going to look back to a time frame in Exodus, the 12th chapter. Do we have the 12 and 1, please? 
And Yahweh spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. Now let's stop. Time is a very hard entity, if I can call it that, to figure out. Because during the time of the Israelites, they basically had a lunar calendar. We operate on a what today? A solar calendar. And some mystery religions have a solar lunar calendar. The Chinese have their Chinese years. You have other religions that have Islamic has their own calendar. The Jews have their own calendar. Well, let's find out a little bit about what Yahweh did. So, what was that term again, please, reader? This month shall be unto you the beginning so of So, the month. question would be, what month? This month shall be unto you the what? Beginning of months. The beginning of months. Now, you know what? We say our beginning of months is what? January. Correct? Please read. Find a scripture where it says about what month that De is. Deuteronomy 16 and 1. So you have Deuteronomy... 16 and 1, please. Observe the month of Abib. So this is the month of Abib. And keep the Passover unto Yahweh. Ah, Yahweh so they're going to keep the Passover in the month of Abib. For in the month of Abib, Yahweh thy Elohim brought thee forth out of Egypt by night. Here's a trick question. What month did Yahweh bring the children of Israel from death unto life? Habib. From death unto life. Now, let's go back to Exodus 12. Start over. Read. 12 and 1. And Yahweh spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. So now we know it's the month Abib. And? It shall be the first month of the year to you. So we know that Abib is now the first month of the year to them. And? Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his house take it, according to the number of souls. Every man, according to his eating, shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb she shall be without blemish. Stop. So that lamb, did, you, did it say first year yet? A male of the first year. Ah, a lamb, a male. And? Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. And? And ye shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month. Tenth to the fourteenth. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it between the two evenings. You spell whole how? H-W-H-O-L-E. Whole? Assembly. I'll just put Israel. Kill lamb. That, that's enough. Oh, no, 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 no. What else? And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. So, in other words, they have a door post. So they have blood there, they have blood there, they have blood there, and they have a basin there. Right? Right? Yep. So read that again. 
and they shall take of the blood yes. and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. What do you call that? You call it a door. <laughs> right? It's a door. Right? There is a pattern, but it's also a door. What else? What? And they shall eat the flesh in the night, roast with fire, and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. So you have unleavened bread. <laughs> what else? Bitter herbs? Bitter herbs. What else? Roast lamb. Roast. I forgot my A. You know, ladies and gentlemen, this is only a part about Yahshua and this thing called Easter and Passover. There's plenty, plenty more. I'm not going to hit everything. So don't be disappointed. Okay? So you have basically three items on a menu. What else? What about that lamb? Could they break a bone of it? You find that part in there? Find that part in there where the, the lamb cannot have his bone broken. Anybody can help him out? Please do. It's in the 12th chapter, I'm pretty sure. That's all right. Now, Yahshua came in to institute, correct? No, Yahshua came in to Fulfill. Now, here's that word. Old Testament is fulfilled. Yahshua came in to fulfill the Old Testament. Would you say that Exodus 12 chapter is part of what is called the law or the old portion called the scriptures? Yes. yes. So, we identify some situations or items or points about that Passover that the children of Israel were going to have to keep, correct? Now, let me ask you this. Yahshua, did John the Baptist, who was the one with the hair here and the beard, this is Yahshua without the hair, this is John the Baptist, Yahshua. Did this one John call his cousin a lamb? Okay, so there's a point. He's a lamb. Was Yahshua male or female? Was he really the firstborn of Yahweh? Right? Now, let me ask you this. Did Pilate ever examine Yahshua and say, I find no fault or blemish in Yahshua? Let me ask you this. Did the whole assembly of Israel say, let him go. They said, crucify him. So in other words, all the assembly said or had to kill him.
Help me out. Crucified. C I F E I. Crucify him, not crucified. Crucify. Yep. Get the Y in there. Crucify him. Right? Now, let me ask you this. Did Yahshua ever identify himself as being a door? Did Yahshua have, as the previous speakers say, a crown of thorns or a point of blood on his head, like a lintel of the door? Did Yahshua have nail in his right hand and nail in his left hand? Isn't that like a side post? Didn't Yahshua have a nail in his feet? Could we call that four points of blood on the door? Like they had to put four points of blood on the door back in the land of Egypt, which is a type and shadow pointing to that one Yahshua. And Yahshua had to come in and do what? Fulfill the scriptures. Now, did not Yahshua, if you go somewhere over around the 25th chapter of Matthew and in the other Mark and Luke and possibly John, Yahshua is gathering together about this time. He told his disciples, go get the Passover. Right? Yep. Go get the Passover. So that Passover they had to get was a lamb. Wasn't it? Yep. What did they have back on the menu in the 12th chapter? They had a lamb. Didn't they? Yep. Now, that lamb that Yahshua told his disciples to go get, they had to cook it. So it had to be a roasted lamb. Correct? Now, this one Yahshua, when he was sitting down, is kind of pictured right here. If you look down at the bottom of the Pentecost plate, his disciples are here. Correct? Oh, the first thing that he did he took bread. So what kind of bread did Joshua take? Oh, so he had on his menu that night with his apostles he had Unleavened bread. Correct? He took bread, he blessed it, and he gave and said, Take, eat. That is my body. Now we have another big mystery here. He didn't say, That is my body. He said, this is my body, broken for you. Because, see, he was the only one who was fixed or whole, and everybody else was broken. Because he had to come in and mend the brokenhearted. He's the only one who was whole. But he said, take, eat, this is my body. Then, what did he do? He took the cup, right? And it was filled with Boone's Farm. Some of the best Ziffindel. 
You mean there wasn't wine really in that cup? What had to be in that cup? If Yahshua the Messiah was true to what he had to do, he had to fill, fulfill every jot and every tittle of what was written back in Exodus, the 12th chapter. And we did not read that there was wine that they had to drink down there in the land of Egypt. Right? So they had to have what in that cup? Bitter herbs. Now, can you have a little faith, hope, trust, and confidence in Yahshua and establish it because you never had it before? We're not taking your sweet Jesus away and not giving you something a whole lot better. Does that make sense? Now, that deals with Yahshua and how it was. Now, I have something else I want to deal with here a little bit. Because I talked about time. And we have to understand Yahweh's timetable. Yahweh's timetable. So we have this month, Abib. And I think once the children of Israel get back out of bondage to a nation called Babylon, they started calling it also Nisan. Okay? So Abib is the first month of the year to them. Now you know what, folks? We are now at the 16th of April. Basically, 16 days ago, it was the 1st of April. And back when you were kids, you pulled something called April Fool's Joke on people. Now, what you have to remember, Yahweh has told us that that mystery old boy was going to change the signs and the times and the seasons. Remember, there's a mystery religion out there that started all the way back here at the Tower of Babel. Is there some connection between Babel and Babylon? So what takes place is the beginning of the year was changed from the recognized April to January. And the people who ended up believing or accepting the January as being the two-faced God Janus, seeing out the old, I didn't say Janus, I said Janus, looking out the old year and looking in the new year, the people who started to believe and accept that mocked, mocked. This is what it was. It was a mocking of the people who still held on to April 1st. They believed the truth, but they were mocked for believing it. Very important. So now we have the first month of the year. But now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like for you to go over to Exodus, of Genesis, the first chapter, first verse. Now, we need to know something a little bit more about time. We, now we know that the first month that Yahweh gave to the children of Israel was Abib. Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Now let's stop right there. 
It is unfortunate that folks don't come down and sit down and learn something about their Bible and how it is put together. That in the beginning is really supposed to be in the beginning of my vision. Elohim created. But now, who's my that had the vision? See, if people, the theologians, who churn out these diploma mills of the cemeteries, I mean seminaries, that are out there. See, if, if, if they really understood what was there in the Bible and how it was compiled, a whole lot of stuff could be cleared up. But it's in the beginning of my vision. So let me go over here to what we call the Moses chart. And we can see this one Moses up here having a panoramic vision of Elohim. When you get to Exodus 24 and 16, where it said, six days the cloud covered this mount, colon, and the seventh day Yahweh rested, something along that line. Right there at Exodus 24, 16 is where it goes, Genesis 1 and 1. If you knew that, it would straighten out a whole lot of mess. In the beginning of my vision, Elohim created. Now, there is a lot of erroneous theological doctrine, mystery religion doctrine, going on out there in the world that there is somehow two accounts of the generation of Adam or the creation. If they only understood that Moses had to go back up into the mount, a third primary trip, over there around the Exodus, the 34th chapter, where he got a, I'll call it a rerun of the creation to basically, lack of a better phrase, straighten up some of the misconception that Moses had and left the people with. I'm not going to go into details. So now, we're back in Genesis, the first chapter, and we're dealing with time. Continue. And the earth became without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters. And Elohim said, Let there be light, and there was light. Now hold it. Let there be light. Let me ask you this, ladies and gentlemen. Did this one not only consider himself a, lamp, a, a, a door, didn't he say that he was the what? Light. The light of the world. Yahshua said he is the light of the world. So Elohim said, let there be light. And that was not the S-U-N light that he is talking about. Because if you're a Bible scholar, you will know that the S-U-N was put in place on the fourth day. So the big mystery question would be, well, what light was it if there was no sunlight when Elohim said, let there be light? And then, how did the vegetation grow on the third day? Because we would not be having, as we would call, spring at this time if we didn't have a longer day period. 
of sunlight. I'm going, cameraman. So now, I want the reader to get to where he's describing what light is and what day is. One five. And Elohim called the light day. Hold it. He called the what? Light day. So he called light day. And what? And the darkness he called night. Darkness he called night. Uh -huh. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Hold it. I thought it was midnight and day was the first day with us. Isn't that where our day starts? Is that 0001? But he says light equals day and darkness equals night. And he said it was the evening morning. Right? Mm -hmm. And he said first day? Correct. Now, I'm not going to be able to get everything out. We just need to learn, know, and understand a little bit about Yahweh and that what he calls light is day, when he calls darkness, it is night. Okay? Now, one of the plagues back here in the land of Egypt was a plague of darkness. Now, you heard or read where some of the other plagues were lifted. Nothing was said about this plague of darkness being lifted. And we know that there was a phenomenal cloud that appeared down in the land of Egypt that was a pillar of fire by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And it gave light unto the Israelites and it was darkness unto the Egyptians. What Yahweh called light, he called what? Day. And what he called darkness was night. So the Israelites were in the day of the situation, and the Egyptians were in the night of the situation. Right? And the children of Israel passed through from death unto life into the wilderness of Sinai. In other words, there was a very phenomenal day that took place here at the Red Sea. Now, we're going to get to this one called Yahshua. You have to remember, light is what? Day. And... Darkness, it is night. Well, what we have here is Joshua. Well, actually, the Hebrew day would start at, we'll just put 6 a.m. Now, we're not quite sunrise at 6 a.m. right now. But we're getting much closer to it. All right. Dawn. Now, at 9 a.m., Yahshua was what? On cross. Now, remember, Yahshua had fulfilled being a male of the first year, without spot and blemish, he was put up 
on this cross, right? Had the blood on the lintel and the two side posts from the basin, four points of blood. So Yahshua was put up there on the cross at 9 a.m. So that was actually a period of what? Light. Therefore, it was also what? Day. But now, from the ninth to the, excuse me, let me figure out a better way to try to say this. This 9 a.m. is also called the third hour of the day. Backwards, why? But from the third hour to the sixth hour, it started to do what? In other words, you were going from dusk to twilight, probably a better way to say it. To dark. Or this is from 9 a.m. to 12, we'll just put noon would be 12 p.m. So if it is light and it's going darkness, we have a period of what? A day. Now, from the sixth hour to the ninth hour, or that is from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m., it is what? It is dark over the face of the earth. That's why it's this dark blue. It's dark. This is not trying to portray a beautiful blue sky. It is dark. All right? So, now you end up having Yahshua because it is becoming the time of the Passover. And Yahshua is our Passover who was slain for us just here or from where? From the foundation of the world. So here Yahshua is, they have to get him down off of this cross. They had to get him off of that cross and get him buried in Joseph's new tomb. Everybody got that? So now, when this really takes place is is on what we call a pagan god. We do. That's what, that's what Friday is. It's a pagan god. You can look him up in the dictionary any way you want to. That's the same with Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and good old Saturday. You can look them up. They're all after some god of some sort. Remember, there's a mystery religion. Got it. I got it. All right. So what we have is on Friday, we have really two days in one. Right? Huh? Because we haven't quite... We had a period of light he called day, darkness he called night. So now we have the, two, 
This is where it gets hard for me to explain. And if I stumble and bumble, come back again and somebody will do a much better job than what I'm doing now. But you have a period of, you know what, cameraman? You can come over and see this. Some people can explain it, as I say, better than that. But you have a day on Friday, which is the first day. And then you have a darkness from 12, 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. Then you have the light of the day from 3 to 6 p.m. And then you have the second night going after that. So there's two days in one, or there's a phenomenal day on that Friday. And then he's in Joseph's new tomb all day on what they would call the Sabbath day. And then early in the morning, he resurrects in the fourth watch of the night. When did the children of Israel resurrect out of, out of Egypt? Dawn. The fourth watch of the night. Am I right in that? They came up, they came up through the Red Sea in the fourth watch of the night. If they came up in the fourth watch of the night, and they're the seed in type and shadow, or the son of Yahweh, then his true son had to have a death, a burial, and a resurrection in the fourth watch at the S-O-N rise with the S-U-N following. Does that make sense? So if the people would end up coming and sitting down, you can learn something of truth about Yahshua the Messiah so that you can establish that faith, hope, trust, confidence, belief in, trust in Yahshua. Now, is there plenty more to add into about Yahshua the Messiah? Yes. In Easter. But hopefully, some of this helps you so that you will know and understand that a day with Yahweh is light and night is as darkness. Now, let's go on over here. We're going to go to the ages and dispensations chart just to bring in a couple more little points. Right here at the division between the first age, which is a creative age, and the second age, which is the ante meaning before the Diluvian age, right here, you would, could say Yahshua came in. And then you had also the beginning or the death with Adam. Yahshua is that lamb that was held over and examined for 4,000 years. Did you get that? A day is as a thousand years with Yahweh, another part of time, and a thousand years is as one day. Right? So the lamb was examined for these 4,000 years, and then he had to be what? Declared faultless, male of the first year. He had to be sacrificed because it was all set up from the foundation of the world that he had to go through it. And Yahweh had set up types and shadows overturning and overturning and overturning. So when you would go back and you would look and examine the witnesses, the witnesses are not lying. Because the works that Yah Yahweh gave to Yahshua, Yahshua did. So that the people would believe that he actually came and visited them. But they said, oh no, he wasn't the Savior. And they're still what? 
They're still looking for him to, to come. And the previous speaker told you, he is come. He has come to those who believe. He has come to those who have hope in. He has come to those who have trust, confidence in. But you know what? If you don't have trust, hope, confidence, trust in him, you know what? He hasn't come. And you know what? He's not coming back in Jerusalem unless it happens to be this Jerusalem above. You see where I'm pointing? In other words, he has to come in you. That's where he has to come in. And when he does come in, then you have, what's the word? You've been taken captive, lack of a better phrase, against your will. And that is a great thing. In other words, you will believe in Yahshua if Yahshua is in you. And you're not going to believe in that iniquity, that mystery of iniquity that you have been under all of your life. And if you want to think that helping the little old lady across the road is going to be your soul's salvation, you're sadly mistaken. I didn't say don't help the old lady across the road. <laughs> But that's not going to be your salvation. Your salvation and hope and trust and confidence and belief in and desire and worship of and serving of is Yahshua. And hopefully something that was said that ties in with this time of year that is called Easter and try to figure out how it is a movable feast to the Roman Catholic Church and many others. That's another lecture in and of itself. Because when you look up into the sky tonight, if you can see the moon, we're very close to being at a full moon. Or it may be yesterday. I just saw a big, what I look like could be a full moon. So please come back. Yeah, there was a blood moon. I heard that. Okay. So the time is up. Hopefully something was said that was edifying to the body of Yahshua, the Messiah. Thank you. Questions for this evening. Are there any comments or questions? Joy class. Are there any announcements that need to be made? At all? We can stand for the doxology. I'll be quoting the last two verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory, with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. Let us all say... state of its condition then you see it come to fruition that's a type of resurrection 
When you turn off the light and go to sleep at night, bury your head beneath the covers. Arise in the morning, oh, that's just another type of resurrection. So I know that he lives, my Redeemer lives, I know. Tell me, do you? Yes, I know that he lives, my Redeemer lives, I know. He gave me all the proof. Yes, I know that he lives, my Redeemer lives, this I know. How about you? How about you? Israel ate that lamb, then left Egypt's land to the Red Sea. Oh, Pharaoh right behind them. Through divided waters, Yah delivered them on dry land. That's a type of resurrection. Old Joseph was a dreamer, his brothers did despise. They put him in that hole, for they sought to take his life. Then he was lifted up by the merchants passing by. That's a type of resurrection. So I know that he lives, my Redeemer lives, this I know. Tell me, do you? Yes, I know that he lives, my Redeemer lives, oh, he lives. He gave me all the proof. Yes, I know that he lives, my Redeemer lives, this I know. How about you? How about you? Abraham was faithful, took his son to sacrifice. Then Yahweh said, you please me, you don't have to take his life. Then he turned around to see the ram Yah did provide. That's a type of resurrection. Oh, a type of resurrection. Oh, 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 Now all these types and shadows truly testify. That Yahshua has risen, that Holy Spirit that gives life. I don't have to sit and wonder if he is alive. Cause he said, I am the 